The ruling establishment has a lot of, they, they will stop at nothing to complete their toolkit of control. Right? So one of the things that has been missing from the toolkit of toll control has been quarantines and curfews, right? Mm -hmm. So now, welcome to the new world in America where to get on a bus, to go through a subway station, if you think that the procedures at the TSA are onerous, right? Yes, this is coming to a bus depot near you. It's a more invasive way, and the ruling class needs this because, let me say, if the ruling class ever saw yeah. wide-scale civil unrest, you'd see an Ebola outbreak in America right away. Okay, so this is, what you see is that Ebola is... Another tool in the toolbox of the ruling of class repression control. Yeah, to, of, to keep down Absolutely, repression. positively, 100%. This is a tool. Right. It, Ebola doesn't just magically start spreading. Mm -hmm. And then we have this doctors that come back here. The white people, of course, live. Mm -hmm. you know, the two whites who got it survive. All the black people that get it die. Uh, right? It's very possible that uh, these uh, NG, one of one of these NGOs over there is going around uh, with a veil of uh, Ebola or spreading it from a small plane onto villages. The point is, is to get hundreds of thousands of people infected with it and uh, create uh, the next phase of control. Now, one of the things I'd like to show to back up my, uh, uh, my claims here, uh, here's a document from the uh, Rockefeller Foundation. Rockefeller Foundation, right there. You can zoom in on that, where my finger is. It's called Scenarios for, for the Future International Development, the Rockefeller Foundation. All right. Okay, let's take a look at what they're saying here. This is uh, something like a 50, 60 page document. I'd like to, you to go to uh, page 18 if you can look at this up on the internet, but I'll read it off to you. It's called lockstep, lockstep. And this is a, a phrase that I used uh, right after 2001 when I saw the entire system of the United States, including the population, were in lockstep. Uh, so the Congress went along, and yes, it was Osama bin Laden, and the people waved their flag and said, I hate, 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 and everything was in lockstep. Well, in 2010, uh, they published this, Rockefeller Foundation, and here's what they're saying. They're saying that uh, it's, they call it a scenario. These are scenario narratives, and they speak about it in the past tense. So they put out this scenario, lockstep. A world of tighter, top-down government control and more authoritarian leadership with limited innovation and growing citizen pushback. Okay, I'll read a, a little bit of it. In 2012, the pandemic that the world had been anticipating for years, nobody was anticipating a pandemic, finally hit. Unlike 2009's N1 H, uh, H1N1, uh, this new influenza strain uh, originating from wild geese, they use wild, they use some scenario, but this is Ebola they're yeah, talking yeah, about. Even the most pandemic prepared nations were quickly overwhelmed when the virus streaked around the world, infecting nearly 20% of the global population and killing 8 million in just seven months, the majority of them healthy young adults. The pandemic also had a deadly effect on economies. You, you can see the, you can see the agenda just naked, raw, naked control agenda written down, and it's anybody's guess how this becomes effectuated in real life. So whether this is written specifically as marching orders or whether people take it upon themselves in the intelligence networks to say, okay, well, this has been produced, so this is the plan here. But these narratives have to be written in advance because the intelligence agencies don't know how to do this, these narratives. They need help. So the, these think tanks, they come up with these like Rand Corporation, Rockefeller Foundation. These are think tanks of death. They're not the think tanks. They're not there to find great ways to help people. Right? Okay. The pandemic also had a deadly effect on economics. International mobility of both people and goods screeched to a halt, right? which is what they want. They want a completely isolated world, right? Debil debilitating industries like tourism and breaking global su supply chains. Well, of course they want tourism stopped because they don't they're not in the tourism business and they want you at home in your house in front of the TV then they got you 
because once you watch the TV, they, they own your soul. Even locally... Wait a second, we're on television. I mean commercial television, let's say. Uh, national. Uh, even locally, uh, normally bustling shops and offices sat empty for months. Okay, so th I love how they talk about it in the past tense in 2010. Right? The pandemic blanketed the planet, though disproportionate numbers in Africa died. <laughs> Southeast Asia and Central America, where the virus spread like wildfire. It sounds like the opening uh, monologue of a disaster movie, right? Exactly. Now listen, to, here's the good stuff now. But even in developed countries, containment was a challenge. Now here's this one. I love this one. The United States' initial policy of strongly discouraging, in quotation marks, strongly discouraging citizens from flying proved deadly in its leniency. So they're saying, oh, so they're saying that... No, keep going. Okay, it. Proved it's deadly good. in its leniency. Leniency. So they should have been tougher, right? Accelerating the spread of the virus, not just within the United States, but across borders. However, a few countries did fare better. China, in particular. The Chinese government's quick imposition and enforcement of mandatory quarantine for all citizens, as well as its instant and near hermetic sealing off of all borders, saved millions of lives, stopping the spread of virus far earlier than in other countries. So the message is here is we have to look towards the Chinese, the oppressive totalitarian, totalitarian. Yeah, Chinese regime as an example of what we, we need to be doing here. And of course, the ruling class here loves the Chinese regime because they have the, they have demonstrated to the ruling class the most efficient form of authority capitalism which is, which is authoritarian capitalism so we have capitalism but unfortunately we have this like veil. I get it. we have this veil this of democracy it's, this is yeah. very interesting this is, could continue on Please. okay uh, okay China's government was not the only one that took extreme measures to protect its citizens from risk and exposure during the pandemic national leaders around the world flexed their muscles flexed their authority and imposed airtight rules and restrictions you can see the agenda you know, go, go, go. okay from the mandatory wearing of face masks to body temperature checks at the entries to communal spaces like uh, That's what's happening right trained, now. Yeah, but soon it's going to be like body, you know. I, it's It'll not, be at the subway? Yeah. They, they, well, Is that what you're saying? We'll be going through this and the subway, get on the buses absolutely, and the subway? Absolutely. Things like that. And, and what, what this means, though, is, you know, don't, don't think about having a, you know, a cigarette, a joint on, you know, or, you know, I mean, basically, you can't, this is a, a dragnet for everything. So if, if in order for you oh, to... In other words, just like with stop and frisk, this is ultimate stop and frisk. And this is uh, the this ultimate is stop cavity, stop and face, cavity search kind of thing. All right, so during the pandemic, national leaders are in there, flex their authority. You know, they're, 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 uh, now there's some good stuff. Listen to this. Uh, and even supermarkets, they want uh, body checks at supermarkets, okay? So basically what they're saying is they're building a system where Every move you make, you can't you've got to go through them. You okay. can't get food. Well, can't how about food. if you go to the farmer's market? Right. Here's the good stuff now. I mean, it just keeps getting better. Even after the pandemic faded, this more authoritarian control and oversight of citizens and their activities stuck and even intensified. That's the whole point. So they're going to so get rid of... Did that happen already with 9-11? Uh, of course. 9-11 was how many, 14 sure. years ago? And sure. we still have all these uh, draconian So they're going to put the body cavity USA searches Patriot in. USA Patriot and That's all right. that stuff. So in order to get to the supermarket, you got to have a body cavity search. And then when there's no more evil, evil uh, well, you know what? We kind of like this way because we have a in complete infrastructure of uh, a, mm -hmm. a control grid. Like, in order to, to protect themselves from the spread of increasingly global problems, from pandemics <clears throat> and national terrorism to environmental crisis and rising poverty, leaders around the world took a firmer grip on power. Well, what the hell would rising poverty have anything to do with imposing strict uh, citizen controls with face masks, right? so they're very sloppy stuff here. Uh, at first, the notion of a more controlled world gained wide acceptance and approval. I'm sorry, 
Nobody likes this stuff. Keep, They're keep just saying it. Sit no, I have, to, I, have yeah, to, I have to. I have to provide have, analysis. Only because we only have five minutes left. So that's. Oh my five. God. Okay. Citizens willingly gave up some of their sovereignty and their privacy to more paternalistic states in exchange for greater safety and stability. I mean, that's just a, a, that's just a complete naked contradiction to the famous saying that if you think you're going to give up a little bit of uh, security, I mean, if you want, if you're going to give up your freedom for security, you're going to get neither. That's the long standing thing. And here what they're doing is they're not even ashamed or embarrassed to absolutely say the exact opposite. They're saying, yes, we all want to give up our, our privacy and sovereignty for more stability and security and stability. So you don't get that. When you give it up like that, you get the shaft. That's Can you show us the, the cover again of I'll what you were just reading? One more time, and then I have this two is more documents. Right, this is what we were reading here, and just zoom in a little bit so folks can see it. He'll zoom in. Don't worry. You can relax. Okay. And scenarios for the future technology and international development. Okay. Now, now I have two more documents. Keep it zoomed. We have the National Security Memorandum of December 10th, 1974. This is Henry Hold Kissinger's down. brainchild. The National Security Memorandum number. 200. You can look that up on your internet. Internet. I'll summarize it. He says that there's too many people. We got to get rid of the population. So to answer your question, oh, from earlier. Yeah, yeah. He says he used the word depopulation, which is different. Depopulation means killing people that already exist, and it's to get the minerals because we need the minerals. And here's another one. The CDC has a patent on Ebola. They patented it. Yeah? Right. So basically, if you want to get a cure for your Ebola. Uh, you it says go it right up here, right? It says human Ebola virus species and compositions and methods thereof, and it's a patent. It's a patent. Uh, they patented the main strain plus something like 17 other strains of it. So they own it now, and I don't know how exactly you can own that, but apparently they've, they've done the same thing. Yeah, I didn't think you could own a natural. Yeah, you can. I guess the main thing to, 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 to finish off this show is this, that... Um, uh, that um, they want to get more control, more curf and it's and it's going to be curfews and quarantine. So what I'm saying is that unless the American people start to get some new um, way to uh, revolt, a new way to organize, new way to protest, new uh, in, unless they, we can break through the uh, ap apathy, because that's what we have here, uh, then it's going to be a slave state here. The ruling class doesn't seem to have too much resistance. They're getting everything on their Christmas. Uh, shopping list, and they've been wanting quarantines and curfews for a long time. Now they got it, and and if you want to live in a world where you're tricked into all this stuff because it's for your safety, right? And if you want to have a probe and make sure you gotta check your pockets, make sure you don't have anything incriminating on you before you go out, and and when you step out of your house, you want some police there to monitor and see what you're doing. If that's the world you want to live in, be apathetic, don't do anything. You're gonna get that world very soon. It's coming your Let's go to this one here. This is um, a document that was online, found online. Here's what the UN is officially saying. A weird UN document dated for July, 20, July 4th, 2025 has been leaked online? I think not. This was published 2021. Here's what they are saying. The directive is that the entire United States of America will be immediately known by a new name corresponding with the number 0001. The, United, the former United States of America will now be simply known as America Area 20002, the former Central America, including the former nation of Mexico. Either way, they're going to even also Canada is in this as well. A symbolic signing today on a new North American trade pact between Canada, the U.S. and Mexico. But Justin Trudeau says there's still more work to be done. The recent plant closures by General Motors which affects thousands of Canadian and American workers and their families are a heavy blow. And Donald, it's all the more reason why we need to keep working to remove the tariffs on steel and aluminum between our countries. Donald Trump gave a nod to the sometimes tense talks leading up to the revamp NAFTA. The blueprint to replace the 24-year-old deal 
was agreed to at the last minute before a September 30th deadline after negotiations stretched over more than a year. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who has also become a great friend, which has been a battle, and battles sometimes make great friendships. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. So the United Nations will actually create a new world order by 2025 is what they are planning on doing. It's out there. They apparently want us to know uh, very openly what their plans are, which is basically to enslave us on the same um, on the same model that uh, China is being enslaved and they want to enslave the entire world now and uh, so if we go along with this as Americans and even people throughout the world throughout the free world uh, then um, this is going to be our future we're, we're going to have everything that is in that document lockstep and everything if I were the devil if I were the Prince of Darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the. So I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth, I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing.